Hi, and welcome back to The Secret Life of Parkinson's. I'm Jessica Krauser, and I'm here with Brian Baker. Hi, Jess. Hi. Um, so we have Fred, I'm going to say it wrong now, Piccolo. Did I get it right? Get it right. All right, good. I was afraid I was going to get it wrong. It is a hard remember, name. Well, on, when I say things wrong the first time, it sticks with me, so... Um, anyways, Fred, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Fred is the director of special projects and he works for Gus. Bilirakis. Bilirakis. Thank you. Um, so we actually just heard from, um, we just heard from Chris Great. Jones, who is also on your team. And he was talking to us about the national plant and Parkinson's act. And it's my understanding that you um, you used to work uh, for Gus years ago, and then you just rejoined his team, and you are a young onset Parkinson's patient yourself, correct? Yes, and I apologize for the bells. This is, the bells are going off in Congress right now, so sorry for the noise. <laughs> I, can, I can't hear anything, so that's fine. As long as as long as you're okay and you don't have to go anywhere or do anything. Does that mean okay. they're actually doing something up there? <laughs> no, they're not here. They, oh. they just do this for fun. <laughs> it's kind of like when they ring the school bells and yeah, it's like no one's there. Um, so Fred, why don't you tell us um, about yourself, about your Parkinson's journey and then your journey working with, um, with Gus? Sure. I, uh, you know, I, was, I was an athlete my whole life. I was a four-sport four sport athlete in high school. I was recruited to play college football Ooh. Uh, and uh, baseball. So I was, I was always active, and, and, and I, I maintained that activity after I left college. And when I was about, I don't know, 30, 31, I started noticing that my, like Michael J. Fox, he says his, his pinky would twitch. Mm -hmm. And I started pinky twitching when I'd reach for the radio in my car. And I didn't think anything of it, and I just went along with it, you know, willy-nilly. And then I met my, my future wife, and we decided to get married. And at my wedding, my leg was shaking on the altar. And I, I couldn't stop it. Aww. And I'm like, well, this is weird. And so after about a year or two of my tremor in my arm getting worse, I finally went to the doctor and they said, they said, you know, you could have had MS, ALS, or Parkinson's, and you have Parkinson's. So that's the one you want out of those three. Yeah. And I said, that's a, and the funny thing is, when I went to the doctor two hours later, I was on, my, my, I was on a flight to Vegas. So I got diagnosed from Parkinson's and then I went to Vegas. So, <laughs> Way <laughs> to you. celebrate? <laughs> Yeah, I went, and ironically, you know, I, I think, I think it, it's something that's common amongst PD patients that I know that it is it is a bit of a relief when you get diagnosed. Yeah. yeah. At least I know what I got and what we, how we can fight it. And that's, so yeah, that's uh, how I, we felt too. Yeah. So I, I I was diagnosed and I started taking some of the medications and I realized that you know it's not the end of the, and it's not the end of my life. It's not I'm not gonna let it be the end of my life. And so then I I looked into exercise and. You know, people that operate gyms for this purpose are, are great people. And, and I said, I'm going to get in there at 5 a.m. at F45, and I'm going to work my tail off to feel better and as, as well as I can for as long as I can. And, uh, you know, I, I joined. I worked for Gus in 2006, so it's, it's been a while. Both of us have aged. <laughs> I have probably aged more than him. But um, I worked for him back then. And he, when my wife and I moved up here about eight months ago, he graciously took me on board. And he said he wanted you to lead my Parkinson's efforts, and I said I'd be happy to do it. And you know, I, I look at I look at these these ads on TV for HIV medications and Hep C, and it's like they cured Hep C with two pills. And I don't know when that can, that happened. And HIV has become a disease that's basically manageable. It's a manageable disease. And I'm I'm saying when when Parkinson's when 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 good Lord gonna be our time. Yep. And then yep. I think this Every is what, day. and Gus is trying to make it our time soon. So I, I'm confident. I'm I'm hopeful that we see a cure and easily in our lifetimes. And and I, I I'm I'm going to do everything I can to make it happen. Well, you are speaking our language 100. percent I mean, we look at those same ads. I mean, I'm, I just, I, I, my my background is in marketing, so I even just look at that stuff. Don't cry. Um, I. <laughs> I get water. Yeah, he has he has an eye tear problem, um, but I. So Jesse is okay to make fun of me. Shh. Now I lost my train of thought. Um, I look at all those ads too of just you know one, we need to showcase or share like really what Parkinson's is and what it's doing to individuals and same thing like they did this for HIV and like you know when HIV was was 
Rampant. Rampant. I mean, it was like, you know, it was it was a death sentence, right? And it's like, and now it, you you get it and you can, you know, take care of it. It's just like, yes, I agree. It's like, when is this going to happen for Parkinson's? Real quick, I basically think, you know, we, we had a couple of Americans get Ebola and all of a sudden we have a vaccine. I'm like, can we can we can we do that for Parkinson's? Can we can we just kick it kick it up a notch and get her done? Mm-hmm. That's that's my hope. Yeah, yeah. And I always get frustrated listening to people saying, "Oh, it's down the road, it's down the road." No, I need it. <laughs> I need it today. Yeah, I have this issue today, not down the road. You know, so. So we learned about the national plan to end Parkinson's and like what's included, um, very high level. But so, what is it that? how do you help push it along and we brian and i asked like what can we do and we know we can reach out to our you know state government officials but you know i don't know i feel i feel like is there's is there more like how else can we help this get it to where it needs to go well i think you i think you could actively move it through the process i know chris probably explained the process Mm -hmm. and it's slow tedious and it drives me nuts Mm -hmm. i i worked up worked in politics for 25 years and it moves like molasses and uh, and that's why I like people that kind of there's a funny story about, you know, Newt Gingrich told a funny story about Donald Trump. He said uh, he said like him or hate him. He said he said, you know, Trump's the kind of guy if you ask Ted Cruz to come in and flip and, and knock a ta- flip a table over, he'd give you a dissertation on why the table needs to be flipped. If you ask Mitt Romney, he'd give you 20 minutes of boring history of the table. Donald Trump would come in and flip the damn table. And so that's what I want. I want somebody to come into the Parkinson's world yeah. and just flip the damn table. Yeah. And I. Gus is trying to be that guy. So the process is committee, floor, president. So if you can start in the committee level and hit up anybody you know at the committee level, if it gets out of the committee with favorable support and, and unanimously, it, it, it makes it much more attractive to go to the floor and pass. So I think we start there and then you move it to the floor, I think it'll pass regardless of what we do once it gets out of committee. So the key is to get it out of the committee. And that's where we're having you know some, some roadblocks put up from, from some areas of you know, nobody's opposed, I think, but it's a matter of how do you coordinate these different agencies to work together and, and kind of streamline the process that people are having disagreements about. Yeah. So like what what what, what does that like? What are the roadblocks like which, you know, I mean, it might might be way over our heads of understanding it. But is it like is it agencies like it's, the FDA and, and other groups like that or are they not? Even no, I involved? think it's who you include and who do you exclude and in D.C.? Everybody wants to be included, and then it becomes this albatross that becomes too heavy to move. Mm-hmm. So when you t- certain, you know, FDA or others, you say you're going to be a part, and you're not. We don't have you. You're, you're, you know, we don't have HHS, for example. I mean, I don't think I don't think we don't have HHS, but let's say you you don't have one one agency involved, but you have another, and the other agency wants to get involved, and their friends on the hill say, well, what about this agency? What about this agency? So it's a matter of finding consensus, mm-hmm. and I think that's the that sausage making that they say no one likes to watch sausage being made because it's gross but uh <laughs> you know that that's what it is up here at times but yeah. i think they'll get it done i have confidence chris is working hard and he's 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 doing he's doing good work and i, I think it'll I think it'll get done then it's a matter of you know i think the question that comes after that is what does it do yeah and how yeah. does it how does it process because one thing i've learned from working just a short time here is that this was done in other diseases and it's had some favorable impacts it's really moved things along. They did it with HIV. They coordinated this federal, all this federal money, and, and streamlined it into a process that got more money to those those uh, trials that it kind of had promise, and it really worked well. And so I'm hoping that we can replicate that with this. So I'm not sure how familiar you are you are with the bill, but is there anything in there that that you would anything in there that anything that's not in there that you'd like to see in there? Uh, not, not really. I, I don't, I don't think, I think the, the federal government has its role in, in, you know, contributing to the, the cures of these diseases. But I also think that, that we need, you know, to maintain some flexibility in, in how we administer tests and trials and let people, you know, let people who are in, in dire straits mm-hmm. try some things that maybe not, you know, not, not hundred percent safe, but I think right to try is a good thing that, that we, that, was, was passed, I think, two Congresses ago, and it's it's working well. And I, I think that as long as it doesn't have anything in there that eliminates that, I think we're in good shape. I can't think of anything that I mean. The federal government has their scientists, but I know the pharmaceutical guys have their scientists too. And I'd like to unleash everybody. Yes, on this. I totally agree. It's like just start working together, people. 
Um, what is there, is there like any connection that is you foresee happening or maybe it would just happen organically with, um, I know there's a lot going on with Alzheimer's. Um, I don't know if there's a lot going on with ALS, but you know, all the neurological, uh, disorders, is there any connectivity included with this bill? Because I feel like once you figure out something for one, it kind of feeds into the other, or is it strictly just Parkinson's? Actually, I think the, the Alzheimer's has, has had this done for them. Oh. What we're trying to do with Parkinson's, Alzheimer's has had, and that's been that's been very successful for their research purposes, I think. I, I could be wrong on that, but I think Chris explained that to me when mm -hmm. I first got here, that he's in Alzheimer's research. And so I think it's, it's, it's you know, we're trying to replicate that here as best we can. That's good. Great. I know we need something to happen soon. Yeah, yeah. today. Like we all have some Cinemet and, and you know Mirapex and all those other drugs that we take, and it's great. I mean, they they help you out big time. But I'd I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like to step up. You know, I'll take twenty pills a day if it means it goes away. I, I don't mm -hmm. care. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. I think, but there's there's a lot of promise out there. I, I come from Florida, and you know, the doctor I had in, in Boca Raton was like. He was he was pioneering the the focused ultrasound. Oh yeah. Stuff. And he he swore to me he said, you know, I think this is this is the future of getting rid of your symptoms. He said, you know, they found they found the area of the brain that affects rigidity now. Oh. To focus you can go get focused ultrasound to handle your rigidity and they've got the tremor one down pat. Mm -hmm. He said I wouldn't do the rigidity on you cuz you're too young. He said we want to test it out on older folks first, but the one for if you have a tremor well, the focus ultrasound is great. I mean, it's, it's it, it, it knocks that out. Yeah, we know a couple of people that have had that done, and we uh, interviewed a guy on, on our podcast about it as well. It's, um, I've I'm starting to hear more about it, which is good. It's just still that one's it's like a scary one to go through. <laughs> it's like yeah. once it once it's done, it's done. Whereas like with DVS but, that Brian had, he can like he can take it out or just turn it off if he wants to. So that's yeah, the interesting part. Shooting ultrasonic energy into your head to ablate an area of the brain is not something that you want to <laughs> think about doing, but it seems to work. So, um, so when this bill does, or like, let's, you know, let's say everything goes as planned and the way that we want it to go and it gets approved, are you then, sorry, I'm moving all my papers. Are you then like, would you be spearheading or part of the committee or group that gets all the agencies together and, and like helps lay out the plan or, you know, from the next step standpoint, what does that look like? Yeah, I, I would be, I'd be honored to do that. I, if, if they wanted me to be a part of that, I would, I would definitely do it. Uh, the actual agencies yeah. that'll coordinate and, and do all that stuff will be, they'll be named in the bill. So it'll be, it'll be FDA, it'll be HHS, it'll be Michael J. Fox Foundation, and some others uh, in there that they'll be they'll be tasked with sorting this stuff out, and then the members they they can they can kind of choose their own membership. So okay. if anybody wants to board, but I'll, I want to get it to the finish line first. All right. Got it. Well, Hi. we appreciate I at least, and I'm sure Jess will appreciate the effort that you're putting in. Especially with yes. you know we know what you're dealing with every single day uh, from a Parkinson's patient. I can't imagine what it's like to then have to you know fight this fight, but glad that you're doing it glad that we have people in those positions to do things like this um so please let us know if there's anything we can do of publicizing it or just getting it the awareness out there and so people know um because i think you know once we get things started here in the united states who knows what it will do for then people in other countries because we have a lot of people that watch this podcast in other countries and they are just you know desperate for information and and for you know more medications and therapies to happen so i think that this can definitely be a turning point for a lot of people i agree and i think i i have hope i think there's i think there's a cure on the horizon i think it'll be there i think it'll be there sooner than we think and i i think that uh you know i'm 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 confident that that we'll see it easily in our lifetimes and yeah. we'll, we'll all get to wake up the next morning and tell people I had Parkinson's. That'd be awesome. I don't yes. have. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Well, Fred, thank you oh, so much. Oh, sorry, go ahead, what were you saying? Day happens. I'm sorry? Drinks on me when that day happens. Yeah. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> we got you on video. Uh, Fred, Fred, thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate you joining us. Um, 
and we look forward to maybe having you on again when we can talk about the results of Absolutely. this act. Absolutely. Well, in our last 30 seconds, I will leave you with this. Just as I said on the previous podcast uh, with Chris, please make sure that you look up the National Plan to End Parkinson's and see what it is you can do in your state to help push the efforts along as well. As patients, we need to do everything we possibly can to help ourselves and help our future um, of individuals living with Parkinson's. So with that, have a great day and we'll see you next time. Thanks.